I have two great red wines that are sort of alternative reds because not everyone knows about them, but you will. Stay tuned. So welcome to this week's episode. I have two delicious red wines that really are sort of, you know, no one seems to know about, and I want to share them with you. So this is really perfect. It's right up our alley when we say we want to explore the world of wine. Well, these two wines really fit that bill. So let's look at the very first wine. It's going to be from South Africa, and it's it blew me away. I have to admit, this is the first really, other than a Pinotage, which we'll get to in just a second, um, from South Africa, I haven't had too many of the red wines. Like I said, I've had a Pinotage and I've had um, a Chenin Blanc, which in South Africa, the grape is called Steen. So this is, it just blew me away. I, you can get it at Total Wine and it was really about just under $20. And what was so nice about it and the reason why I picked it wasn't just because of the cat. <laughs> but this uh, is from a, an estate wine in South Africa, Stellenbosch area. And it's called Caracal. And what's so great about this is it is a Bordeaux blend. Now, you know they can't call it a Bordeaux wine because only wines from Bordeaux, France can be called that. Guess what? The exact five grapes that are pretty traditional when it comes to a Bordeaux are in this wine. So wine uh, grapes like uh, Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot and Petit Bordeaux and Malbec are all in here. So it just blew me away and I really want you guys to give this a try. Uh, it was kind of interesting because uh, as I said I hadn't really you know tried South African red wines and you're probably wondering well what made you want to try it? Well I know South Africa is really producing some great wines right now and I was on the Wine Folly website and I'm gonna put a link to Madeline's website uh, in my description box because she really is a wealth of resources. She is a master sommelier. She is a James Beard uh, award winner for her book uh, and just has great resources, these incredible maps about all these different wine regions. And she has a really nice section on food and wine pairing. So I'm on their email list and one of the emails a few months back said some alternative red wines with some of your favorite steaks and maybe some cuts of steak which actually aren't so familiar or popular. So I was like, well, I got to try that. <laughs> so what was kind of nice is uh, the New York strip steak is one of my favorite steaks. So you know what I had with this wine. And, it's, and she said, if you have a New York strip steak, try uh, these wines as some of uh, alternative other than the Cabernet Sauvignon, which everyone seems to gravitate to. So sure enough, <laughs> I went with a Bordeaux style red wine from South Africa and it was perfect. She was spot on. It was delicious. We really enjoyed it. I grilled it on and it was just it was just really nice. Um, of course, because it has a nice, uh, believe it or not, if some French wines are maybe a little too tannic for you, uh, this wine was perfect. I, just soft tannins, nice acidity, I really can't recommend it enough. So if you do love Merlot and you like Cab or you know someone who does, try this. So give this a try from South Africa. And a little story about the, it looks like a bobcat, but it's called I think Red Cat uh, in Afrikaner. And it's um, in this, uh, at the winery, they have been trying to get some of the, the native wildlife back onto the vineyards uh, and onto the grounds. And so uh, the Caracal uh, has made a return. They thought maybe, you know, getting close to extinction, but it's, it's, made, a, it's made a comeback. So, you know, they, they do some great things, environmental friendly, uh, uh, family owned. It's just delicious. So pick it up at Total Wine, like I said, under $20 and you're going to drink something that not everyone is drinking right now, a Bordeaux style wine from South Africa. Wow. So next, we're gonna to go to Italy. And we're not going to the traditional, or everyone knows about Tuscany, <laughs> um, or the Veneto, right, for all the Pinot Grigios. This wine is just really, really cool. 
It is from Umbria. So Umbria, central, it central Italy. It's just a little south of Florence and a little north of Rome. So really central Italy. And what was kind of, what struck me about this one is I picked it up at my local Italian store. And you know how when you find a place that you trust, like I do at that place, and the, the wine manager, he has these great little cards where it says, you know, try this, <laughs> or you're gonna love this, uh, with some really nice descriptions. And sure enough, he was spot on with this one. It was also mentioned, I think, in one of our local uh, newspapers. But it's a red blend. So it has Merlot, and it has uh, Sangiovese and Sagrantino, uh, uh, an indigenous grape, by the way, the Sagrantino, uh, of Umbria. And it's known for making these really tannic, uh, you know, tough wines to, to get down. But you know what? This wine was just these beautiful red fruits. And you know what was kind of funny is it's a blend of these three grapes, right? And I didn't even look at it. I was like, you know, if, if this, if, if, if my, my store, and John is his name, if he recommends a wine, I just pick it up and I'm probably uh, going to be just fine. So I did it with this one. And I poured it as I was um, getting ready for dinner. I was going to grill some uh, lamb kebabs. Because uh, I thought, well, you know, the Italian wines, they're going to be just great. So I grilled, uh, I grilled, I started getting the lamb chops ready. And I took a sip of it and I thought, wow, the one thing I can taste is just this intense red cherry taste. It reminds me of a Sangiovese. Well, guess what? Then I turned the bottle around, Trent, and then I actually looked at the blend. And sure enough, Sangiovese is the dominant grape and Merlot and Sagrantino, like I told you. So um, again, very affordable, under $20. So here you are drinking two great wines that most people aren't drinking right now. And if you ever found these on a, a wine list, you know, those are some of the great benefits of trying wines other than Cabernet Sauvignon, other than Chardonnay is you can find some great value driven wines and they taste great. It's not as though, you know, I'm, I didn't sacrifice anything. This wine was perfect with my grilled lamb kebabs. Absolutely perfect. So I drank and ate really well and I'm tasting some wines from areas that, you know, not everyone knows about. So that's today's uh, lesson really is explore some of the lesser known areas and we have Umbria, Central Italy, and then South Africa. So there you are, two great wines, one from Italy, one from South Africa, great with food. They were delicious on their own, but really great with food. So obviously the South African Bordeaux style red, great with my New York strip steak. And then I had my Umbrian red blend, perfect with my lamb kebabs. So well, it's just great. And you know what, with the Italian wine, since so much of it, 60%, was, is full of Sangiovese, or they use Sangiovese to make it, it's going to be really nice if you like Italian tomato sauce dishes. You know, Sangiovese is just perfect with anything tomato. So, which is kind of tough, because not all red wines can do that. Well, uh, you are going to be so happy <laughs> if you try any one of these wines. And uh, it's worth searching out. It's, like I said, one of the best things about going to a, a local wine retailer is you could tell him or her what you like and let them uh, steer you into some things that are other than Cabernet and Chardonnay. Well, thank you so much for sharing our channel with your friends and family. Please let them know to subscribe. I always sure enjoy it. We're here for you. And it's just so nice to explore the world of wine together. So until next episode, everyone, cheers.